Engage for Success Radio, raising the profile of employee engagement and shining a light on good practice for people who believe there's a better way to work. Well, hello and welcome to Engage for Success Radio show and show number 403 in our weekly series. Engage for Success is a not-for-profit movement and the UK's leading voice on the topic of employee engagement. We are raising awareness and running events through our area networks around the country and our topic and sector specific thought and action groups, developing research, publishing case studies, and shining a light on great practice. You can visit us at engageforsuccess.org to learn more and sign up for our weekly newsletter. And I'm Andy Gorham, a new host of the show and founder of BizJuicer, a consultancy that helps companies connect purpose and proposition to your people, creating stickier, more successful businesses from the inside out. And today, I'm speaking with a special guest, David Summerflake, a digital marketing specialist with an interesting view on how to keep employees more engaged and productive. How are you doing, David? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, Really good to be with you today. Um, How about you just tell us a little bit about yourself before we get stuck into this topic? Absolutely. Well, I worked for different marketing agencies for approximately 20 to 25 years, um, right out of college. Um, I graduated with a degree in English with an emphasis in creative writing. So it interned at uh, a few newspapers and, and marketing agencies. And upon graduation, I really discovered that there weren't that many decent paying jobs for writers or journalists where I lived. So I went into marketing agencies and I was one of the few people who could write fairly decently, uh, but also was extremely experienced in web design and digital marketing and SEO and e-commerce, even back in the 90s when it was still uh, relatively new back then. So I worked for marketing agencies, like I said, 20, 25 years. In between those experiences, I also worked as a freelancer or independent contractor consultant, where I worked with business owners and what we call mom and pop shops as well. So that's the bulk of my experience. So as it, as it relates to marketing, I've pretty much have done everything as far as being a project manager, web developer, SEO, writer, freelancer, and so on. And I should say I recently um, wrote a book. Wow, you have to just chuck that in on top, why don't you? Um, yeah. What was the book about, Dave? Uh, it's really my first nonfiction book. It's called The Road to Digital Marketing Profits, which is a workbook that takes the reader from the perspective of being completely new to digital marketing, maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And we're taking you from the novice perspective to the end point where you're fully informed, you know how to use digital marketing to expand into new markets, how to increase revenue using it. And you also have a digital marketing plan that you could take with you to a bank or credit union uh, and, you know, in the pursuit of a loan if necessary, but at the very least you could use it to scale and be much, much more organized and deliberate with your processing going forward with your processes going forward. And we use the metaphor of the driver. You're driving on a trip from point A to point B. You encounter hitchhikers, roadblocks, dead ends, broken GPS, (laughs) driving around on on a quarter tank of gas, all of the things that happen to you if you've ever driven cross country or gone on long road trips. So, so oh, far the good. reviews are, are very positive and I update it and add more to it uh, fairly regularly. I'm on the, the third version now. Well, let's take this metaphor of a journey then and get stuck into this topic that we've got to talk about here today. So, you know, we are here to talk about how to keep employees more engaged and mm. more productive. I mean, that's a, it's a massive topic. And uh, with your background in marketing, how how do you see this, my friend? Where where would you start? Well, there's multiple perspectives. Um, If we look at it from the perspective of the business owner, 
I think in psychology, they say that everybody is either running toward gratification or pleasure, or they're running away from pain. The, the business owner, and I mean, and that relates directly to marketing because that's what you want to address in the consumer. From the business owner's perspective, they're either looking at how can I increase profits or how can I reduce losses? Very seldom do they look at both of them as overlapping or complementing each other. So when we talk about employee retention, engagement, if you will, to decrease turnover. As far as your bank account is concerned, the bank account looks at money objectively. Your bank account doesn't care whether you're losing money because you're not getting enough customers coming in or if you have increased turnover. So from that perspective, decreasing turnover really is, is commensurate to uh, increasing profits, if you will. And I mean, from the perspective of a marketing person, for most businesses, I would say, if, we, if the goal is to decrease turnover, right, which is you're losing money because you have to always be hiring, you always have to be training, you always have to start up this HR machine, you always have to begin the, all the processes all over again and train and retrain. Not to speak of a, a lot of other factors that go into this. So from the marketing perspective, if I look at how we did things in marketing agencies and also as a freelancer, how I would work with, co with clients, I would, for the marketing agency, we had quarterly goals that we had to meet. We had monthly goals that we had to meet. We had weekly goals that had to be met. And then, you know, which we called the churn and burn rate. And then we would usually have daily meetings for many agencies, not all, but some, yes. So, I mean, they were run like lean, mean marketing machines themselves that because we were producing content on such a tight structure organization was extremely important or we wouldn't meet our quotas. If we didn't meet our quotas, the company didn't meet its profit margins. So when I look at most businesses, I think having at the very least quarterly meetings with staff to make sure where are the holes in, in our operations so that we can seal those holes. Where, why are we having weekly meetings well, if they're impractical logistically, then why not have biweekly meetings to make sure that everything is being met? At the very least, I think that would decrease turnover, increase operational efficiency, and that's just to get started. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, um, I mean, it's such a, a, a big, broad topic, but um, when, when you look at the C-suite, right, and, and yes, you can get into the tactics of having more conversations and more communication and what have you, when you look at that, C-suite, how important do you, do you feel that uh, they take uh, to your experience in engagement and have many of them even recognized the, the issue? And, and if so, how have you kind of got a C-suite mm -hmm. to wake up to the benefits here and uh, the opportunities, say? Um, I don't think, well, I know most of the C-suite, they don't take it seriously one little whit. They see it as a pain in the fundament. Um, it's something I'll get to when and if I have to get to it, just like marketing. Most businesses don't engage in marketing, specifically digital marketing, which is my forte, until they're already bleeding money. And in many cases, it's too late. You know, Google can't save a failing business, a, a failing business. It's not a miracle cure, but statistically, most businesses will ignore digital marketing until they are operating at a loss and they need to be turned around, usually very rapidly. Um, as far as decreasing turnover, I think most of the C-suite in general, at least in the U.S. and most businesses I've worked for, they don't take it seriously at all until it's problematic where they have executives being um, confronted with lawsuits like Harvey Weinstein, for example. I worked for many, many agencies, sadly, 
where there was an enormous amount of sexual misconduct and harassment taking place. And the the C-suite is perfectly happy to do that. Why wouldn't they be? Because if they're the ones perpetrating it. Um, But I think by requiring regular meetings between staff and C-suite, you can address issues before they become issues. You can address productivity issues before they become uh, holes that need to be sealed. And very seldom does C-suite staff even engage in these meetings. Usually it's the staff and an intermediary management, you know, your uh, your supervisor meeting with this team. That was how it usually worked with agencies. You know, you would this particular group would meet with the um, project manager in charge of a particular uh, development of a particular uh, project, for example. So you'd have a group of maybe 10 freelancers working on website development and all that goes into that with the one team lead or the project manager. But most businesses in general, I think, would benefit enormously from getting the C-suite to buy in to decreasing turnover. And I mean, obviously that's gonna vary from company to company as to how informed the C-suite really is and what what amount of money they're burning through with turnover. Sure. And I mean, we, we, you know, and I mean, when we talk about these meetings, we're not talking about an hour that needs to be budgeted. You could do this in 15 minutes, you know, where the middle manager could open the discussion and close the discussion and the, the higher up manager could could come in for 15 minutes or whatever to be informed or even have that manager report back to them. No, I'm so sorry. I, 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 sorry to interrupt you. No, not at all. Though. Look, I get it. I think, um, I think your points on communication are, are, are well made. I think let's take a look at it through the eyes of a, of a marketer, which is where your specialism is. And, and, and sure. for me, one of the proven enablers of employee engagement, and we talk about it a lot um, within engage for success is is employee voice, right? Um, yes. Which yeah. I guess is associated with the ways you can make employees feel genuinely listened to, involved, and valued, massive parts of, of engagement. Um, Absolutely. So when it comes to connecting with your audience, something as a marketer, I guess you take as bread and butter, um, how, what are the ways that you would use those sorts of skills um, to get employees more engaged with what the business is about and what it um, does and their place in it? Yeah. How, how would you tackle that? There's Well, first of all, I think very, very few, if any, uh, businesses that I've worked for realize that their staff, their native staff, really could be producing content for them on a regularly recurring basis in terms of marketing collateral. And by doing that, you actually make going to work more creative, more entertaining, it gives them a voice. It gives them some level of autonomy. It increases engagement at work because how could it not if you're engaging them in producing actual marketing collateral for that uh, company? And, you know, we talk about content. What is marketing content? Well, you're right. You're producing material that your ideal consumer or client or customer wants and needs and would see value in, or at the lowest rung of the ladder, would be entertained by and get them to come back to your website on a regularly recurring, repeated basis. So they're going to be more engaged, right? So you have increased engagement on multiple levels. And as far as the middle management, they're going to enjoy coming to work more. They're going to be more engaged because now they get to be creative. Right. So yeah. what I would do is, and this is just me, obviously, uh, but I see no downside to doing this, save for it requires some engagement in your marketing department and some small level of revision, perhaps. So I would encourage employees to write blog posts about what it's like to work in a business what their day-to-day activities are, what a day in the life of employee John Smith or Susie Smith, 
what 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 is a day in the life in their life as an employee look like? What are their duties? What do they do? Who do they interact with? Client facing challenges that they encounter. Okay, that's one. I would most certainly have a podcast where I could interview engaged senior staff, middle staff. I hate to use the term lower staff, but other staff members, let's say, what does a day in their life look like? What challenges do they encounter? What are their favorite tools or services that the company, you know, produces? What are some of the challenges that they're facing? So you could be engaging in with your uh, staff, your employees. You could have your employees interviewing other employees, or even some people they know in similar industries. You could be collaborating with uh, competitors even. You could be collaborating with complementary suppliers or vendors to talk about the challenges uh, that they encounter, how they use the company's services or products. So you have a blog. You have a podcast. You can easily take the podcast, turn it into a video which I may do of our interview uh, here today, where, you know, you just simply take the audio. I've seen many, many podcasts where they take the audio and just have something um, interesting to look at visually while they listen to the podcast on their preferred video platform, such as YouTube. It's one more outlet. Or you could have it be obviously a video conversation where you get to see the people's expressions. It depends on what's available. So you definitely would want to produce a blog. You definitely want to produce video. You definitely want to create a video, if not also audio uh, podcast content. So if you look at it from that perspective, now your staff is not just doing their day-to-day job, but they're also producing marketing content for the company that you can take repurpose, um, reconstitute, if you will, promote on social media platforms on a regularly recurring basis, you know, where you submit it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all the other applicable social media sharing platforms. But you do this also on a regular recurring basis. Every 30 to 60 days, you can resubmit the same content over and over and over again with different hashtags and perhaps different descriptions, which is different SEO. And you could use an automated uh, uh, solution such as Buffer or Hootsuite, where you could automate this whole process and so that everything is resubmitted over and over again every 90 days, every 30 days, whatever. I can see that certainly the amount of involvement there would definitely increase engagement. I mean, I, I why think, wouldn't you? I, mean, I, I, I read a worrying stat uh, the other day. I don't think it's a particularly new stat, David, but a stat all the less that said nearly maybe two thirds of your employees in, in an average company have no idea really why the company does what it does. Sure. And I think, you know, to really drive proper, lasting, sustainable engagement, upping the levels of people be feeling very clear about what the business does, what their role that, that they play in it is, is is a vital kind of foundation point for, for engagement. If you're looking at, again, the sort of internal connection to that audience outside of um, collateral pr- or, or content production, what, what other things would, would you recommend to increasing that level of connection and engagement from your employees to, to what the business actually does? Yeah. I think um, one one thing I would do most assuredly, you know, where we live in a post COVID-19 reality now where in just about every country, we're always going to be having periodic uh, surges. It looks like uh, we're going to probably have variants coming of varying degrees of, of efficacy. You know, I think studies have shown conclusively that permitting staff to work remotely wherever possible increases overall satisfaction, decreases turnover, and increases overall efficiency. 
Why not do what marketing agencies were doing a decade or so ago, if not longer, and let people work remotely if they can do it? You save office space. They save time and money with these lengthy commutes, and everybody comes back happier. That's definitely one thing that I would do. Um, I would also, if we're going to see our staff as individual creative personnel who can produce more content and more marketing collateral and more traction for our social media, which I don't see any reason not to do that. What I would also do is encourage them to be more active on social media and promote the content that they create. Take ownership of it. Be proud of it. Post it to their individual accounts as well. Hey, I just wrote a new blog post for my, my business or the, the company I work for, you should really check it out. Here's a photo of me at work, or here's a video of myself at work uh, interacting with uh, a staff or something, you know, as it relates to marketing content, of course. You would tell them what you want, how you'd like it done, let them do it. And then you would review it, of course, before it goes live until you have more confidence in that uh, staffer. I would also look at, how we could use different software, web-based programs to increase efficiency overall. I don't think enough companies really look at what can they do, not just to cut costs, but also increase overall efficiency within different departments across the board. So streamlining efficiency. And then that includes productivity tools as well, David, does it? Or? Oh, abs or absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give you one quick example. I worked for many, many marketing agencies. I loved this uh, web-based program called Trello for, you know, basically creating different cards for different tasks and sorting them. Now, for me personally, it didn't work. It, it was more of a pain in, in the fundament than something that helped me. But I understood the premise. So I found something else that worked more for me individually. The, the, it still had cards, but they were color coded. Um, you know, you could organize them in different ways. I could set timers on individual tasks. So I had deadlines for each different task. So it helped me increase efficiency and productivity much more. And now that I no longer work at the agency, I've used it for my own personal and professional life working remotely as an individual. Uh, much more. So it helps me keep on task with producing the content that I want to, as well as working on other books, if that makes I sense. Think to them, articulate. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think there's lots of good tools out there um, that, that, that can help guys kind of workflow and, and keep things going and keep track of where everybody else is. I think we've seen over the last 18 months, companies make some big mistakes with kind of spyware type like uh, tracking tools to keep on top of what they do. Yes. This is the wrong, the wrong message, right? Yeah, I can actually relate to that because I've, I've worked for marketing agencies and myself where I had uh, uh, team managers or project managers, if you will, who were so, um, so uh, micromanaging that it actually inhibited me from doing what they wanted done. So, for example, there was one agency I worked for, obviously I'm not going to name it, where they wanted me to work on a book uh, for, for that, you know, marketing department. I couldn't work on a book when the project manager is coming in and checking with me every 10, 15 minutes to see how my progress is moving. I have to stop and address that person. What, what artwork am I using in the book? Look, either you trust me or you don't. I, I can't keep stopping every 15 minutes to address these points. So, yeah. And how did you deal with that stuff going on? Dave? I, I felt engaged <laughs> in the wrong way. Yeah. I remember there was one company that actually had a key logging program installed on our computers. And I just found it just by mistake one day, just typing in key log uh, when I was searching for files. And I found the program and I just said, well, I really don't appreciate that because my job is to produce content for you. I have to search Google. I have to search social media accounts to find material to link to, to refer to, to, to study. You know, I'm producing content on a daily basis at a very rapid pace here. I really don't appreciate that. You're basically saying you don't trust me as an adult 
to search for related content, even if I were looking for something disreputable or pornographic or what have you, I wouldn't have the time to look at it because it wouldn't be related to the project I'm working on. Secondly, I've got people walking by my, you know, uh, PC constantly. So I really wouldn't be able to do anything even if I wanted to. So it's an inhibitive as far as making me feel trusted or valued. No, I think trust is the, I guess, ground floor um, base camp, if you like, of the journey towards engagement anyway. Without trust, Absolutely. you're not going to achieve anything, right? Um, right. And, 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 uh, I was just going to say very briefly, that speaks to the company's ability and willingness to screen and then onboard appropriately, which further goes toward engagement. 100%. 100%. I, I think a lot of the things you've talked about today from a marketing perspective, um, you know, they're really there for what can do a very good job for people's employer brands, right? And we've seen some pretty ropey, thin attempts at um, really trying to portray an authentic employer brand over the last 18 months. There's been some great examples of good stuff, but there's been a hell of a lot of rubbish um, flying around as well. And I think some of the things you've talked about uh, involving guys in content creation could 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 help uh, brands come across as more authentic. But why do you think so many businesses avoid that stuff? Maybe. I think I think it's a case of you don't know what you don't know. You know, um, I, I think um, many business owners are are not marketers. And I mean, let's get real. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur and your business is accounting or a business coach or doctor, dentist, lawyer, what have you, if odds are very high that you're not already also going to be a marketing expert with background in digital marketing. So you're not going to know about SEO. You're not going to know about backlinking and internal linking and what the image should be for a blog post featured image, for example. There's so much that goes into into marketing, let alone digital marketing. So the, unless you're an expert in this, you won't know. So it's easy to see how they would um, not not see these opportunities. What's not easy to see I is there's also why you wouldn't as open well to it. Of that unknown. Yeah, there, there must be a bit of fear of that unknown, maybe a risk of failure, yeah. like that kind of stuff in there as well. Yeah. Listen, before we run out completely of time, if you were if you had the opportunity to sit with someone today who was struggling with employee engagement and a productive workforce. What's the one piece of advice that you'd offer up, David? My one piece of advice would be to sit down and work out a very deliberate, very organized, thought out plan uh, where you first identify what the key issues are, what the problems are, then begin organizing them in level of importance and then come up with a plan as far as, you know, how, how we can um, try to work through this okay, to the company's that's... advantage as well, obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, for everybody's advantage, <laughs> company, employee, and hopefully customers come the end of it as well. I mean, that, that, is, that is the game. Um, David, that's, that's great. Thanks very much for your, for your thoughts and insights today. Um, where can people find out a little bit more about you? Anyone interested in learning more about myself and the services I provide or my podcast or my book can uh, just go to www.dms.blue. Those are my initials. And it's also what I do as a digital marketing specialist, and it's my favorite color. <laughs> Always good to have something that you love near your company name. That's what, that's what I think. Absolutely. David. And it's also part of a visual brand. Look, excellent. Good stuff. And I would expect nothing less from a marketer like yourself. So, look, that is about all we have time for today. Um, thanks very much to David. Don't forget to visit engageforsuccess.org to check out the show notes and all of our fab free employee engagement resources, uh, where you can also download or stream any of the great shows from our archive at your leisure. Um, Dave, once again, thanks ever so much. Thank you uh, for sharing all of your thoughts. We'll be back again at the same time next week. I'm Andy Gorham, and thanks for listening to the Engage for Success radio show. Engage for Success radio, raising the profile of employee engagement and shining a light on good practice. 
for people who believe there's a better way to work.